you know, what is right, what is wrong. Uh, because yeah. I think that a lot of people are starting to call the things that might be good um, bad. Mm, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm a proponent for immigration and such to put that out there. I Absolutely. Love, I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, I mean, if you think about it, immigrants built this country, right? Exactly. And for sure. um, immigrants have added a lot of value. And because of immigrants, we've been able to keep prices to a certain level or whatever. But it's a double edged sword. Mm. I think there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, having secure borders is also important, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. otherwise you don't know who you're letting in the country. And we see examples of what that looks like in places like Europe where it's all open borders, you know, and you and they accept a lot of refugees and there's also higher levels of terrorist attacks over there, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there was recently a, an active shooter terrorist event in si Siberia, no, not Siberia, Czech, Czech mm -hmm. Republic, you know? And it's, that's just, that's what's to come here if we have an open border policy. Yeah. You know? Man, but, so like, like I said, I it's a double-edged sword, you know. It definitely is, right? Because you have the people that truly want to go about changing their lifestyles and such, but then you just have those people that I think it, at times we, we get the short end of the stick because from what I've heard, countries will release a lot of their, like, you know, um, criminals and such and say, hey, Absolutely. go to the United States and, you know, live your best life. You mm -hmm. know, if this is the only thing that that person knows is how to be a terrorist, got to kind of expect it yeah. right right, right. Uh, and like i said you don't know who you're inviting in yeah. and there's so many videos with what, what what's been going on with the crisis in our south border mm -hmm. and you know there's there's it's not women and children coming over seeking asylum you know yeah, yeah. it's it's not even a, like a lot of hispanics from latin american countries you nah. know you yeah. see you know a lot of um Ar arabic people you see a lot of uh, chinese people you see a lot of uh, just and they're all men. They're, they're all, all military middle, middle age, age men. Yeah. Military age fighting, well bodied, able bodied men. So it's like, see, we were doing this for the 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 people seeking asylum. Right. Where are all the women and children? Exactly. Right. 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 Yeah. Let's see. But I, I guess us as a country, uh, we need to go about improving their lifestyle as well, to where they don't necessarily have to seek refuge over here. Mm -hmm. Right, because everybody's going to end up seeking, you know, the the easiest place to get into. And America has always been the dream for, you know, pretty much the rest of the world. Right. If yeah. we go about improving their uh, life circumstances and such, then maybe they don't have to come over here. Um, so taking an active interest in, you know, what's going on around the world is going to pay dividends, you know, in that fashion as well. Because there's a lot of people that say, "Man, I, I would love to go back to my country, but it's war torn. I don't want to subject my family to that kind of stuff." So. You know, here is, you know, the the next best thing, you know. Yeah. I, and man. then you have, like, just to piggyback mm -hmm. off that, I, I, I agree to an extent. But then you have the other side to it, right? Uh, I forgot what president did this, but they were forcing, trying to force Africa to legalize gay marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And so there, Africa's like, no, leave us alone. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to impose your yeah. your, your views on us? You mm -hmm. know, and America was like, okay, well, we're going to impose sanctions on you then. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like, what? Why yeah. are we imposing sanctions on mm -hmm. people that just because you know a man they're not they don't allow a man and another man to get married or a woman and another woman to get married? You know, like is that part? We go back into like what is right and what is wrong and what are actual rights and you know that's that's the the civil secular side but on the on the spiritual end of it is marriage is a a ceremony of union blessed by god where you take mm -hmm. oaths and vows and you make promises to god mm -hmm. and so it's like well you don't even believe in god so why do you want to take part in this this ceremony right and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because this is a, a Christian ceremony, you know, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. why don't you just have like some sort of um, civil union, right, to the mm -hmm. state? Um, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's kind of a, a strange place to be. It is, man. The whole world is strange. We, we're starting to observe a lot of different things, man. It's, it's kind of worrisome. I mean, we're, Absolutely. we're, we're even losing um, like the trust of these other nations. They see what's going on here and how separated we are, mm -hmm. and and just the, 
you know, they're, you know, they're trying to escape their war-torn country just to come to another war-torn country yeah. that's so divided right now. I, and I, it, it's, it's wild. You know, other countries are like, do we really want to continue modeling after you? Like, you yeah. guys don't even have it together. Yeah. You know, I keep hearing that America, <clears throat> excuse me, is a third world country with a Gucci belt. Yeah. <laughs> like, we have the image of yeah. prosperity and all this stuff. You know, man, I, I hate to put it out there, but this is the kind of stuff that happened, like, right before, you know, every great nation's fall. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've said that here before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know. We start hyper focusing on the wrong things. Gender Hence why roles, we're talking about bunkers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hence why we get back to the bunker. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what's happening, right? They're, we're trying to preserve these things that that God has put into place, right? Like, but even God is ta being taken out of the national anthem, or not national anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, right? They're yeah. trying to take them out of all of these things that, like, that's why we're here in the first place. Yeah. But we're trying to rewrite things and, and like, you know, it, just like you know, the peak of all these other nations. Yeah. They think they're so powerful and they can do whatever they want. And they think that they can mess with gender and. Yeah. Like, look at, look, well, look what that got them. Mm -hmm. What makes us any different? We've been a superpower for how long at the top of the list? The smallest and, amount than yeah. any other nation in yeah. the world. We're a baby compared to all the other nations. Yeah, absolutely. Man, but it's still worrisome, you know. Um, and I guess the control is the easiest way to go about, you know, forcing people to do everything. So I don't even know if people even say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore, right? Um, That's true. I don't, I don't think so. Which is very interesting. So you had the people that were fighting to, you know, take out the under God. From the, dollar, know, the pledge, yeah, all the pledge, and, yeah. and everything. You know, they they yeah. want to take God out of everything. Um, but I, to be honest with you, I've never even read the the dollar bill and all that. I don't care what's on there as long as I can pay for my stuff. You know, <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. But um, people are fighting to get that taken out of school and such, and you know, it just another line in there. Like, what what does it actually mean to pledge allegiance to a flag, right? Uh, because especially in a, a country such as this, where it's a melting pot, and now you have people that are flying different flags and such. So what does it truly mean to pledge allegiance to a flag if other people are going to be allowed to fly their flags here? You don't really see that in other countries. If they are pledging allegiance to a flag, you, you don't see anybody else's flag flying yeah. in that country. Yeah. You know, So mm. we've kind of strayed away from you know the ideals um, that we held or cherished. Yeah. Right. Something that I like to joke around with my wife. Um, I'm like halfway joking. But uh, so, you know how we are always conforming here in the United States to um, some sort of minority, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, we have, uh, we, like, especially in, in, in the South, you have pamphlets in both English and Spanish wherever you go because they're the highest population of Spanish speakers that don't speak English, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, now with uh, the LGBTQ community, they have um, all gender bathrooms and things of that such. So in more, I think the word is monogamous countries where mm -hmm. it's just like everyone's the same, everyone looks the same, everyone has a, I'm probably using the wrong word. Homologous. Anyway, hom homogenous. Yeah. Homogenous. Yeah, That's yeah, the correct know. word. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So like in Japan, right, for example, um, my wife was looking up uh, something to try and buy tickets, right? Mm -hmm. And she brought up a good point and everything was in Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. So it was kanji and hiragana, katakana, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so Show she's, off. Yeah. <laughs> and so then she's like, how is anyone else supposed to buy tickets for this, right? Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, you're right. We should go over there. We should become, um, uh, we should go over there uh, with our regular visas and then demand that they make us citizens. And then they should start putting English in everything and Spanish because I speak Spanish and Tagalog <laughs> because you speak Tagalog. Wow. And then we should make, start, make them conform to our ideals, you know, and then whatever we need, that's what they should be doing, you know. And then she's like, oh, they're not a melting pot. We are, <laughs> you know. But I'm just like, no other country does this, you yeah. know. And mm -hmm. I understand because we're a melting pot. And but it's like, at what point, at what point do we say enough? You know, yeah. at what point do we like say like, okay, this is reasonable. This is unreasonable. You yeah. know, this is, 
this goes against the laws of nature this is ridiculous you know yeah whatever i mean i, I think that that's the thing just because our laws were so flexible right because if you go up to canada that they're pretty much a melting pot too right they have a lot of you know Definitely. indians indians and pretty much anybody else that you would find essentially in the united states mm -hmm. um but then you go down to mexico and such um you, you do see like some caucasian blacks and such um, but when you go to these countries, you fall under their rule. Mm -hmm. You don't carry the same rules that, you know, you followed in the United States or any other country over there. And it's like, no, dude, we're not changing. This is who we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, that us having alliances and such, hey, you have to follow these rules. Otherwise, you know, we, we aren't going to, uh, you know, sponsor you as much as we used to type deal. It's worrisome for me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're really going about changing the world. And sometimes... In my mind, it's not for the better. Mm, I agree. Uh, yeah. Mm. It's <sighs> tough, man. Yep. It's very tough. That's why we have a standard. You know, I always <clears throat> go back to the Bible. This is why we have a standard of way of living. You know yeah. what I mean? This is any any sort of topic that you can possibly think of. There's ways to, there's a standard for it in the Bible. God has spoken on it at some which time, some form, some way, through somebody. And we've gone astray from that standard and i think that's why there's so much confusion now what do we do and how do we take care why do we have this problem well great yeah. you turned your back on god you know he gave you the instructions you just didn't want to do with that anymore yeah man that was a great lifeline man because like right in the midst i'm like bro that's a lot bro that's yeah. that's there's so like now that i really like now that we're talking about it and i'm looking at like the gravity of things i'm like that's a shit show. Yeah, man. Just waiting to happen. Yeah, and then it, it's it's a great wrap into like, yeah, that's what the Bible is for, is to maintain the standard. Yeah. But we're, that's exactly what it is. We're getting further and further from the standard. Man, they're even talking about doing another revision for the Bible. You know, I think they're talking about taking out books, you know, that are currently in there. So. Who's in know. charge of that? Who knows? Well, yeah. <clears throat> this guy. Yeah. I'm going to talk to him. Who's in charge of that? Of send, me words. His, send me his contact. Don't let me you see know. him on the streets. Let me see. <laughs> you know, but you, you got to wonder, man, like what, what the previous generations were, experiences, were experiencing as well. Because I can only imagine they were saying the same exact thing. You know, ah, we was going to hell in a handbag. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the world mm -hmm. is going to end. You know, that's back in the 1900s, you know, the 1800s and such. As they started seeing, you know, all these different changes. Ah. Oh, we, we can't have slaves anymore? What the, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, what the hell is going on in the they world? They are <laughs> I will not you stand know. for this. <laughs> Don't tell damn. me you're taking away NASCAR too. <laughs> I am, man. You know, but people start seeing these changes. And, of course, it's like, man, the world is coming to an end just because this thing that we've always functioned in is changing. Mm. So... It, it's a double-edged sword, man. Well, I you mean, know. that's what we're trying to do with this podcast, right? Like, people are changing the way they get information. They're not reading a newspaper as much anymore. Mm -hmm. They're not watching commercials. I mean, dude, it's so weird, man. Like, so we when we were growing up, we when we would watch TV, like, we would watch, like, 24 or, like, um, mm -hmm. or like American Idol or whatever. We would watch together as a family watch and then the commercials like go get your snacks mm -hmm. yeah. go take a piss yeah. like, hurry up it's the back door it's, it's starting back. it's exactly. starting right and you got to run back exactly nowadays everything's streaming yeah so lana my instant gratification my two-year-old <laughs> she'll be watching something and then when the commercial comes on she'll be like commercial papa commercial because <laughs> we can skip it now and i'm Who's like this yeah. girl's not gonna know commercials yeah my kids are the same. She's like, Papa, commercial. Yeah. Come. <laughs> my one-year-old that doesn't God. even know how to talk, right? Like if I have Miss Rachel on or whatever, like the commercial will come on and she goes, Papa. She's pointing at the at the at the TV, and I'm just like, you don't know how good you got it, girl. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Me. Skip when then when you see a 30 second commercial, you're like, oh, this is the longest yeah, forever. Exactly. But we're growing up so like long. five minutes. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nothing but commercials. But yeah, it's man. it's different how we consume now. Yeah. Exactly. So constant, constant, constant. We're, and we're constantly being fed things. Exactly. Going back to the phone, I think that's why we're so attached to it mm -hmm. because it has our email. It yeah. has a message. If someone needs to call us, if they, someone needs to FaceTime with us, exactly. Like it's not even like you know like just calling on the phone anymore but it's normal to hold your phone like this mm -hmm. sure 
there was a like, I'm going a little off topic, but it was so interesting. They they asked like this little kid, um, hey, how do you hold the phone? So if how do you hold the phone? Like when you have to do like a phone, you go we go like this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we make this like the like the Hawaii hang loose sign, and we yeah. put it by our ear. They asked the new kids, how do you hold the phone? You know how they do it like this. Yeah, or yeah, yes. like that, like that, like that, oh. or like this. The one it's I saw different. Was like a brick. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was yeah. like this, or you know what I mean. I, the idea of facing it to your face rather than putting it by your ear, yeah. and you know it's just changing uh, constantly. So, the, back in you know the the prehistoric days, the nineties, you know <laughs> the nineties, <where>, best <laughs> era ever. Yeah, you know, so best era. You think about it, man. The commercials that we were being shown were completely different, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there were there were some subtle inappropriateness that were uh, you know expressed, mm-hmm. but like some of the Got Milk commercials, you know, you, mm-hmm. they would show like a woman, you know, in. Uh, she might have been lactating or whatever. Like, is that why he's so swole? <laughs> <laughs> he's so much he's like, know? oh yeah, I got milk now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but they would show like the image of this lady like lactating, like a little spot on her shirt, like way down here, and it's like got milk. It's like, oh, what the hell? You know, okay, very well. But now you very uh, well. You, 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 <laughs> there it is. Yeah, very well. Yeah, man. But uh, you know, you think about like YouTube and whatnot, it, our algorithms and such. So the stuff that I want to enjoy watching. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I'm constantly being fed. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at, you know, the, what would be the, the proper word for it? Because a conspiracy type stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You're, you're looking at all this conspiracy type stuff. That's exactly what you're going to be fed. Now yep. you're becoming an even more paranoid wor- version of yourself, right? Mm. Um, so you start seeing a lot more of that. And then um, you have the people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's like, man, I don't want to pay attention to any of this stuff. Uh, so then they're they're watching fact based, you know, in quotes, um, YouTube and such, and that's all they're being fed. So um, where is the the real truth in all of this stuff? No, yes. Nobody's really receiving it anymore. It's you know? very difficult to find, if, uh, especially with your phone, right? The way I see things is the accessibility of information mm-hmm. start to become a problem with the internet. Mm-hmm. I tell everyone, uh, technology is the devil. I, I say that all the time. Yeah. If you go back to uh, your feed and the algorithms, I actually had this conversation. The algorithms are so specific and so smart these days and complex to the point where any reel or any video that you stay on, and if you're scrolling, it knows to the split millisecond how long you've been on it. And that type of information feeds into what does he really like? What yep. does he do? You hit the comments. Yep. How long are you scrolling on the comments? Yeah. How far yeah. do you scroll? I don't know if you know Instagram. Uh, they moved where you put the like so that you stay on the screen longer. So there's little things that they do. Really? Yes, because the heart used to be on the bottom, mm-hmm. but now it's on the side. Yeah. You know? Wow. Press and keep scrolling. That. So you yeah. get kind of lost. Like, yeah. oh, there it is. And yeah. then that's another second before mm-hmm. you know it. It's hours for some people. Yeah. I tell my friends. Oh, it's dark outside. <laughs> <laughs> we don't realize how much time we spend That's on it. That's crazy. And uh, just going back to what is shown to you or what is, you know, your feed versus somebody else's, it's very smart uh, to the point where you don't even know that you wanted it, but we've predicted it. And at the same time, we'll make you. Uh, almost excited and you'll get the adrenaline because we know exactly yeah. like yeah. how you want things like yeah. it's it's you're giving it data every day exactly you know, every second millisecond yeah, and, uh, yeah. it's scary definitely. and it really it, it's is. almost like we're, we're being more and more like individualized like social media is right supposed to bring us together but it's like if your feed is different than his feed versus like back in the day when we were all watching commercials it's Everyone's watching Channel 32. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, no, not a whole lot of choices. Exactly. You, it, it, we're all kind of together. We come back to school and we talk about, hey, what do we watch? Like American yeah. Idol or Did Jack- you see the Simpsons yeah. episode? Exactly. exactly. Then you, <laughs> right. You, and we, you don't have that anymore because you might be interested in something else and your feed is taking you to that. You're taking you there. Mm-hmm. And then we come together and, and it's just kind of like, it's a different thing. It's, it's exactly. A, it causes a little bit of separation. And for some people, the only type of connection you have is. A funny reel that you send, or mm-hmm. this person yeah. likes cars. This is the only thing you talk about if you're not in person. Yeah. So that's why I say technology is kind of a uh, a dangerous thing in terms of how your life is in one day. Like you think of how much time is one thing, and then you also think without this, would I be more connected with people or less connected with people? Mm. It's a it's a 
And I think mm. we would be more connected. And the reason being is, I guess what I'm trying to say, there's a lot that goes into technology. And I feel the less you consume, the more you're able to see the world versus, oh, I see the world. It's all on the internet. It, it's very, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it clouds a lot. It, it puts a mask up on everything. And mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I feel like I've seen more the, the more I've limited myself to yeah. couldn't agree more to anything on the internet or even media or yeah, yeah, absolutely you know, yeah media. once you put the phone down then you can actually have you oh there's somebody in front of me exactly or there's someone next to me and you, you know so, eventually you're gonna get a little curious and oh hi my name's Alfredo what's your name you exactly know? and then you start connecting physically yeah. and you actually start having real world ex real world experiences instead mm -hmm. of just hearing or reading or you know watching a video or hearing a podcast about an experience exactly. you know what I mean that somebody right. else had you can have have your own personal experience yeah. Dude, there's yeah. nothing that pisses me off more than when i'm walking down the street and somebody's right here with the phone in their face and i'm walking on the straight line and here they are like zigzagging and stuff and then not even looking up from their phone i, I like have to stop in front of them because they're almost bumping into me like, oh excuse me and it, or they don't even say anything yeah. just cut off to the left dude what those the are the people that like pickpockets and you know exactly. muggers <laughs> target because exactly. they have no situational awareness you know, exactly are you even on the road when you're so driving uh, oh, yeah. dude i could not i couldn't tell you how many people i see texting on their phone yeah. or like i've seen people watching a video on yeah. their phone and they're yeah. like yeah that's, that's wild bro that's i'll tell you wild. this so like five years ago me and my friend uh we were like oh we need to create something because we were sick of people driving or people just being unaware driving how dangerous it could be and i said oh let's create an app where whenever the phone is not just on but whenever the phone is lit up have some type of infrared or a different type of lighting that blends with the melanin in your skin so whenever it's there the person driving, if they're coming towards you, their face just lights up. And it's just automatic. A cop can see that and be like, this guy's on his phone. You yeah. know, something that just, this was like a while ago. Damn. But if there was some way. That was that, called gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> if there was some way that you know someone's on the phone and they shouldn't be, um, you can just. That's a good one. Know, yeah. <laughs> you, telling you. Okay. It wouldn't work anymore because of. Uh, well, why would I download that app? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get it. It would be mandatory. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's, it's just a built in, man. Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, you, you think about how many deaths and whatnot you end up having from <laughs> having people on their phones and such, and then especially for the young kids, like, oh, I didn't know. Like, nah, hell no. You're making this adult decision, you know, to be on or on the road, mm -hmm. and the the you know plea, of, I didn't know, is not gonna work. I tell my little one that all the time, man. Like you're, you're getting too old to be, you know, saying that you didn't know something could happen. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. You know, exactly. But, you know, I guess that we're, that's where we have to have the conversation of when are you truly an adult, mm. right? Just, be, just because you hit the age of 18, you know, mm -hmm. 15 in some cultures and such, um, that doesn't make you an adult, you know, because I, I think that at those ages, you're extremely immature. Yeah. yeah. You know, I guess uh, I was talking to my little one the other day. I was like, man, you know. Uh, I, I would hate to do this, but when you turn 18, before you head off for college and such, I think that we should have a drink, you know. Uh, that way you can kind of experience what it feels like to be, you know, a little inebriated. You're not going to be driving, you know, mm -hmm. let's, let's get that straight. Um, but if you're going to drink with somebody, I'd rather it for it to be, you know, in the, the confines of this house. For sure. Or somebody that I can trust, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to you going out into the world and having to experience, you know, what... A lot of people, you know, become victim too. Yes. Um, no, I, I don't plan on drinking. Like I think everybody said that. Mm -hmm. You know, especially anybody that had like a abusive, <laughs> you know, father, mother, whatever, would, um, or you know, people that had a substance abuse problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you end up saying that, and then you get that first sip, and it's like, oh. especially to your parents, yeah, especially exactly. to your dad. You're like, yeah, yeah. No, daddy, no, hold on. Hold on. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then you fall victim to peer pressure. It's like, man, you don't drink. It's like that. Uh, and then you start drinking, you know, just yeah. as a matter just of being of pure, around these people. Pure, pure you know? pressure, yeah. You know, so I, I was talking to my little one about that the other day, and she was like, ah, oh, you know, no, I just won't hang around those kind of people. It's like, dude, it, you know. So when's a party? Yeah, it's it's so hard. Hard. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> drinks. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's you a know, party, yeah. but, but drinking is, you yeah. know, just part of any kind of social event. Yeah. Especially at that age when you go to you know? It's just the normal. Exactly. Like, that's exactly. how you bond. Like, that's how they bond. You know what I mean? That's how they exactly. party. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's how they unwind. Or there anything. is, yeah. Exactly. Seriously. You know, right. and that's that's the thought. So I was talking to my wife about this the other day, and I was like, man, you know, I don't, I don't hate drinking. 
I, I actually enjoy it, especially when I'm in the company of other people that I can actually you know get along with fairly well. Mm -hmm. It makes the conversation flow just a little bit mm -hmm. easier because now we're we're taking drinks and now we're not you know as conscious to the social that we're lubricant. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. the shirts are coming off. Exactly, the cigars are coming off. <laughs> <laughs> gradually the pants. You guys, oh, yeah. yeah. you guys have You guys have never jacked Brian yet, huh? <laughs> Start rolling, uh, you know. Hey, let me show you this jujitsu move I just learned. <laughs> no, no, key, no, key, no, key. no, no, yeah, man. But you know, um, the, the, the alcohol always makes it like that much easier just to have that yeah. conversation, right? Especially because now we have at least this thing in common, we're trying to figure out other commonalities, but we drink, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's like another, it lowers it a little bit, man. exactly. So, I was telling her this, I was like, you know, you're when you go off to college, that that's going to be the party. You know, people are just going to be sitting around a room and nothing's going to be happening but people drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you've never drank before and now you had your first beer and you don't know what your tolerance is, you know, some, some bad stuff is happening out there. You know, Absolutely. The, the reality of the situation is you're, you're, uh, you have a better chance of being sexually assaulted at a college party than just walking out in the streets of Chicago. That's right? so true. Um, mm -hmm. And if you don't know what it feels like to, you know, have that first beer, it's like, oh, that didn't do anything to me. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, you go to this party and then somebody slips something in your drink. And now you're intoxicated off a of half a beer. It's like, oh, I've never felt like this before. You yeah, know. That's true, bro. It's that's scary, true. right? So you need a buddy system. Exactly. Always. You know. Mm -hmm. And you hope that the buddy that you come with is actually going to do something. Because, man, I've been in so many situations where I, I popped up to a party, especially when I was in college out in Ohio. And go to the party, end up drunk, come with a bunch of dudes, and then it's like, uh, man, he's all right. He'll figure out his own way home. It's like, no. Yeah, you know, it's a good thing that I lived I on campus and all the parties yeah. that I went to were like in the adjacent area. But man, if if I was far away, you know, you hope that you don't end up having those kind of friends that would just bounce on you. Right? That's the last time I ever drank with that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's scary, bro. That's wild. Yeah, man. But you know that that kind of stuff happens all the time. So yeah. you know, having that conversation, you need to really be conscious of who your friends are, <laughs> yeah. and who you can and can't trust. You're so like, on all and right, so forth. today I'm not dead. I'm I'm Mr. B today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't know. drink. <laughs> yeah, but man, you, you think about it. Like over in Europe, it's like commonplace for you to have like a, a glass of wine with yeah. you know just a meal mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and people actually start drinking 14 16 whatever mm -hmm. that way you know when they get to the the appropriate age to drink if you will uh they don't have to worry about you know going out and partying their guts out because they never experienced this you know separation from their family and you know whatever it's also not made a taboo right like exactly. it is here in, in the united states um like I remember in Ireland, I was really shocked. I was it there was an Ed Sheeran concert going yeah. on, and I saw all these like little, I call it I say call them little, but they're probably like sixteen. Yeah. With you know bottles of wine and mm -hmm. schnapps and mm -hmm. you know whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going? What, what is the drinking age limit here? You know, but but they were just they were fine. Exactly. They were just walking around. And yeah, they're a little rowdy or whatever. You know, yeah. but it was just it was normalized. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, like you know, in France and Italy and all these all these countries, they grandpa has a vineyard. You know, mm -hmm. it all they all come together to make the wine. You know, they let it ferment. When it's time to pop a bottle, everyone sits at the table and enjoys a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's not about the wine itself. It's about the community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about let's sit here and get hammered. You exactly. Know, it's about let's sit here and enjoy a nice meal. Enjoy this this beverage that we all work together collectively to to make together and have a nice conversation, stare, exactly. smile at each other, you know, spend time, and it, again, it's about the community. It's not about the drink. We're here in America. We have more of a party yeah. um, lifestyle, and we 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 um, connect alcohol to happiness. Exactly, and that's where the problem is. Exactly, you know, when we start the, getting into addiction issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. because now I need this. Mm -hmm. It's not about oh, that's that would be nice. Let's exactly. bring a bottle of wine to the to get together. It's like, hey, you didn't bring any wine. You know, exactly. like it's it's a completely different. <laughs> it's freaking dynamic. Ed Sheeran, mate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I don't even know what accent that was. That was kind of Australian. Conor McGregor, then Ed Sheeran. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Telling you, man. No, but you know, I think that we need to go about removing that social stigma where, you, yeah. okay, the the only way that I can have fun is when I'm drinking and such, right? Yeah. Because uh, I, I hate that, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. I want to be able to have a deep conversation with people, you know, just sober minded, 
and have yeah. that be like more norm. Yeah, and then when you do drink with that same person, it's gonna be even better. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. it's exactly. gonna be even deeper because you're like it's it's oh, yeah. you have an added substance. Into it. You know, you start having yeah. the uh, the marijuana high thoughts come mm-hmm. out when you start drinking and mm-hmm. such. You know, what is that <laughs> marijuana yeah. high thoughts? Man, so you've never like listened to a stoner talk, like even like mm-hmm. on a, a movie where it's like, bro. <laughs> you know, it just yeah, yeah. Right? That's when you start. When they get like the, into like yeah. rabbit holes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Having, you know the the rounds versus flat earth talk. You know? uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how did we get on this? You yeah, know? yeah, but, yeah. You know, you start having those kind of conversations. Like, right. You know, at the moment, it's like, it, especially if you're sober minded, like this. That dude is stupid. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, the Earth is flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you Idiot. know, one, <laughs> hey, you know, one of those kind of moments. But um, <laughs> it, you, we barely get those kind of conversations anymore, man. Up until you get out into the open, you like intoxicate yourself, right? Yeah. And it's it's scary because you know that the especially the generation now, man. If if you're not getting outside the way that we used to. You know, play fighting and such. The only interaction that you're ever going to end up having with people is going to end up being awkward because now you're not used to being around people anymore. Yeah. You know, and then you yeah. you add the alcohol or any other substance, and people aren't going to know how to act. You know, so it's it's crazy. You kind of hope that we're going to do that like pendulum where you know you have that extreme where people are you know um, extremely dormant and such, and then the next generation is like, oh no. We're not going to have them inside, you know, playing video games and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff, you mm-hmm. know, all the time. They're going to be outside. You hope that it happens, but at the same time, with technology improving the way that it has been, yeah, we're going to be... It makes everything wearing. convenient. I mean, dude, yeah, look, look, you don't even have to go to a restaurant anymore. You can yeah. order it through your app and yeah. it'll be there. You know? And it'll still be warm. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, exactly. It's like, what? I'm waiting on, you know, that uh, that microwave that you can put, like, the, the military pouch in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you just press the button. Yeah, yeah and then like the Jetsons. The like, <laughs> the band, yeah, exactly. Dude, the Jetsons are that far away uh, man i'm telling you i'm telling you man so it's, it's coming i need the chemist it's in the works guys. Yeah. it's in the bunker the blueprint yeah. is in the bunker yeah. exactly man you know so I, yeah. i'd be extremely curious man that you know let's let's get this working patent that thing yeah yeah, let's actually patent it this time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, just curious, why did you have to go through that other guy? Why couldn't you? Uh, someone had to validate the information Dang. and replicate it. Someone with credentials, or uh, he was a master's student, so uh, he was in the same uh, biology. You couldn't get someone else to do it. You know, usually because there were other students, so it would be replicating multiple. Uh. So he probably did three other chemical oh. compounds as well, which is very difficult. You know, okay. you're following some other kid's procedure, right? Yeah. It's like, so party is like, this kid probably doesn't even know what he's doing. Hey, how much, out. how much, like, what are the chances of, say he did three, what are the chances of one of those actually being something that's worthy? I mean, two of them were. Mm. Uh, at least two or three. Um, at least it was published to further get worked on. Right, right, right. So right. it was kind of the initiation of this may be something it's out there let other people test that's what i'm thinking like he might have been like oh here's another one like you know just kind of go through the motion like none of these actually yeah. work or not there are a few of them actually would would mm-hmm. work and yours was like yeah damn yeah. jason yeah, exactly jason. these hands are yeah. still here to create something i just know hey, yeah. there you go mm-hmm. speaking exactly. of faith yeah, yeah. i like it you know, I'm, I'm still somewhat mad at you, Jason, because we could have been rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you I get mean. to that point where money is not, it's just not, <laughs> especially in business. It's, you know, just, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to say that when you're broke. You yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it's not, not about money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you get money. I think Angela oh, yeah. said it last time, like, money is a magnifier. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, it's so just is gonna... drugs and alcohol is just a magnifier. Yeah. It's If you are... Sad and bitter in the inside, but you hide it really well like this. Yeah. Give them a little bit of alcohol, dude. It that's gonna come out. out. Yeah. Give it them a little out. bit of money. That's gonna get amplified. Exactly. You know, it's it's these things that are so short term that we feel will fix whatever issue that we're the underlying issue that we're just not digging into. Mm-hmm. It will just be amplified. Exactly. Yeah, man. And, and that's why it's this whole thing to restore manhood. It it's not. The cars that are going to make you happy, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Not the house or the money or the power or the fame or the success. These things that the world says will make you happy, it's just 
eating salty french fries when you're really thirsty exactly man it's you know the older i get i realize it's the journey that actually is what brings fulfillment at least for me mm, yeah uh, there's a mm. saying the man who the man who loves walking will always walk further than the one who wants to walk a thousand miles something like that something along mm. those lines so it's i like it i like that you'll always realize that once you hit that goal like you feel this little bit of fulfillment but then this period of just being down a little bit like below baseline you know mm. you get a degree you run a marathon like you're joyous for that moment and then you know the weeks coming up you you realize that it's just tough and a lot of people find that with success and mm. they don't really understand it and they realize the fulfillment was that process of training for the marathon you know hanging out with friends to run miles and a pacer and you know these little things yeah that, um, it's so true you see the progress the yeah. process is what because imagine if you went from start to finish and you totally skipped that middle process mm -hmm. It's that middle process that you get the tools, the knowledge, mm -hmm. the experience. That builds the character. You get the tool. Yeah, you'll get the tools necessary that gets you to the finish line. But if you went from start to finish right off the bat and you skipped all that middle stuff, mm -hmm. you just get to the finish line the same person you are when you started. Mm -hmm. So how much better off are you really? You just, it's another check mark. You just did whatever you were going to accomplish, yet you never changed as the person. Yeah. That's why for me, I, I you know, I, I that's that's one of my draws to entrepreneurship It's like it really is a personal development thing and then that's where I kind of fell in love with it like I'm getting better I'm getting better and then at the at the same time I would hit certain markers in my life that said hey once I hit this I'll be happy and then I wasn't so then I realized I'm like okay this is not it entrepreneurship is not I mean it, it's great for what it can do but for me I'm still looking for something more mm -hmm. until I finally like okay I'm tired of messing this up. What do you want, God? Like, what, what, what do, what do you want from me? What do I, what am I supposed to do? Dude, so I guess that's why I'm, I'm extremely curious. Like, when you had the shepherds, or you know, even the the modern day farmer, you know, are they satisfied with you know the crop that they planted this year, especially if it has like a really good yield, mm. or are they always seeking to go about you know doing better next year? Of course, numbers Ooh. and such, you know, but. At the same time, like, can you truly find happiness in a society that, you know, demands more of you essentially every day? You could be the greatest thing, you know, say any sport, mm -hmm. right? You, you look mm -hmm. at sports and if you don't win the Super Bowl this year, it's like, well, you know, they won the Super Bowl last year. But what have they done this year? If, if you come out this year and you go, you know, two and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're trash. Yeah, you know, they, right. they don't care what, what you did last, last year. year. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so we're always on this search for more. So at what point can you really say or can you ever say I'm content with this lifestyle? Unless, mm. you know, you, you say that, you know, uh, I sought out to, you know, accomplish this goal. And after I accomplished it, uh, for me, at that point, I still sometimes feel empty. Right, mm -hmm. because you accomplish something, I joined the military, right? Um, become a Marine. It's like, all right, you know, I've, I've done this. Um, and then you become the Marine, it's like, all right, uh, I, I need to go about attaining this now. Mm -hmm. You attain that thing, it's like, all right, there, there's something always more. Yeah. But why is it that we're always looking for more? But when, when exactly can you establish that content sense? You know, or should you ever be content? Is it biblical to be content? Mm. And I, I think that it is, but for our mind, that we always need more. And I was actually just looking up Bible verses about it. Man, and um, one, the toil of fools wearies them. They do not know the way to town. And then there's a few other ones, you know. Uh, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Mm. I know that there's nothing better to people than to be happy and to do good while they live. Uh, but this is all, you know, going toward toil. Um, and I want to say it was King Solomon. You know, toward the end of his life, or maybe toward the middle. I forget what portion of it was. Um, but toward the end of his life, he uh, essentially turned away from God. right? But toward the middle, um, he sought out to be, you know, the smartest individual. Um, Well-read, you know, had numerous wives. You know, mm -hmm. it, oof. I think he had like over 400 wives or something like that. Um, 
Different yeah, one every yeah, he, day. He was it's like, a record. Huh? Yeah, he was like one of the richest and such. That's crazy. And then he went about describing everything that he had accomplished as toil. He's like, what, what does this all mean? You know? So I think what, that we what find is ourselves. 12? Um, so, uh, okay, let me look up the proper definition before I just, you <laughs> no, know, go out here. To me, it's like something. vanity. Okay. Exactly. Ah. You know, like things that are not everlasting, something that is uh, pointless, right, in the end. Mm. You know? mm. So, mm. long, strenuous, so vanity, fatiguing pointless, way. kind of like that's a... Struggle, battle, laborious, um, effort. Uh, that's what I, uh, I assumed it was, like, uh, laborious, like... Mm. To get or accomplish with great effort. Okay, I was completely wrong. Okay. <laughs> well, yes and no. I got what you were saying. I get what, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it does seem as though it would be that, that thing that um, you seek out to accomplish and then, you know, it was all for nothing. Yeah. Or it feels like it was for nothing. Yeah. Right? You put so much effort into getting this thing and then when you finally get there, it's, ah, we made it. It's like going to the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. It's like you're expecting this grand view and you get the view and it's like, all right, that's it. You know, yeah. 17, hours back, 17 hours back yeah. home, <laughs> you know, like what else are we supposed to be doing here? Yeah. So you take in the view and you, you sit in awe for a couple of minutes and it's like, all right, that's it. And then there's nothing, you know, I feel like um, ever since we were kids, we always had this idea of, you know, I'm in the first grade, I graduate, you know, in the eighth, we have a graduation and we were already told that there was always a goal and we had that goal become our guideline Mm -hmm. and when that happened we were already told oh there's going to be college after oh there's going to be a job after Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so after college was done i feel like i had that same feeling after these accomplishments it's like that was it Mm -hmm. what else was there yeah that was fun yeah yeah. (laughs) yeah. but as i get older like i said like all these little steps leading up to it all this training all the (laughs) different experiences and downfalls are very valuable and people forget about it and that's okay i forget about it a lot but now when i do things it seems more purposeful Mm. because i'm realizing every step has some type of meaning some type of purpose maybe it's something you share with other people i mean uh, we've talked about this that sometimes your experience is there to help teach and mm-hmm. the best person to learn from is someone who's been through that experience so yeah yeah i think that a lot of people need to be more cognizant of their experiences and realize that these are a tool for other people mm-hmm. you know even if it's the worst or the littlest they're minuscule like these little things are important you know, I, I love that man and this dude said something a while back where you were like god's god oh wait your gifts weren't made for you they're made for other people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Or yeah. There's yeah. something along yeah, those lines, right? right? Like your, your gifts were made, they weren't for you, they were for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think once you start to like embody that, like, okay, this is not for my self-glorification or whatever anymore, but it's actually meant to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. It may not be a whole 100,000 people or whatever. It might just be for one or two other people, but it's not for you anymore. And once you, I, I believe once you start to detach yourself from the me, 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 mm-hmm. And consider that this might be for somebody else. That's like the battle you're fighting for. Yeah. I mean, that that's just life in general, you know. Especially for, um, you think about any immigrant to the United States, man. That They came over here seeking opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that first generation, they might not have had it the greatest. But then they're trying to set up the next generation to be able to experience life differently than what they did. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that that leads up to, you know, modern day where... I heard a saying that, hey, you are your great grandparents or your your grandparents, you know, dream. Mm-hmm. You know, you're living the, the lifestyle that they wanted you to mm-hmm. live or they wanted to live, but they mm-hmm. might not have had the opportunity. Wow. So, you know, everything that's, that's being put into place, you know, for the future, it, I don't know what the dream, you know, for the, the future is for me, to be honest with you. Um, but there's there going to be all these advances, and I'm not sure if that's going to be, you know, my dream, but it's going to be a form of somebody's dream, you know? Mm-hmm. So you, you just hope that your kids end up having a, a better lifestyle than what you did in some way, shape, or form, especially if you feel like your, your lifestyle was negative. Um, you know, that they're living out your greatest dreams, aspirations and such. So I feel, I think we talked about it last time, where if you think about your grandparents and your parents and then your generation, your kids' generation, 
most of my friends and the people I know, you see a gradual improvement in how they live, their lifestyle, what they're accessible to, even the amount of toys these kids have now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. At least my niece and all my friends' kids. With that continuation and that progress, don't you think, or someone mentioned it to me, our great grandkids are going to be living like how we wanted to live as millionaires in the nicest neighborhoods because we were talking about neighborhoods last time. But what do you do then? Like, does it backtrack? Does it, you know, yeah. go does in the an cycle opposite? repeat? Like yeah. The cycle yeah. starts over? Yeah. I think yeah. so. Right. I well, honestly think so. Well, in business, right, they say that the second generation is the one that's going to screw it up. Mm -hmm. So, like, say like this we build Operation Redwood becomes this huge thing. Our kids are going to see the hard work that we put in. They're going to carry the torch because they don't want to disappoint. So it's still going to grow at that point. Their kids, are they're not, they're not going to see the grind that it took to put this together. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to... Fall into the success. Fall into the success. They're going to reap all the benefit and none of the hard work. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a different personality, different, like, different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And from there, it, it messes up. Yeah. Statistically, that's what they say. Yep. Mm. Man. It goes along to uh, with, it's the same idea, but it's like, okay, your, uh, your grandfather drove a, a Honda, right? Then your father, he drove the Mercedes, mm. right? And then the third generation gets the Lamborghini, mm. right? So, but then after that, they ended up, it's end up it ends up getting repoed. Yeah. That's the way I heard it. I mean, yeah, I mean you're back on the horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we come back to the Honda. Exactly. You know? Weren't you saying something about that last time? Like, weak men make... Yeah. yeah. That was you, right? Yeah, weak yeah, men yeah. make hard times. Hard times make strong men. Strong men make good times. And good times make weak men. Mm -hmm. The good times with the Lamborghini. And then it all cycles back. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough, man. I think that's why it's so important, like how we started this conversation. We talked about bunkers, but you know, I think to to wrap it up, if it, it, it's so important for men to be that we remind men to have something that's worthy that you're pursuing. You know, teach that to your kids as well, especially if you're raising young men, young boys. Teach them to fight for something, to strive for something bigger than themselves. Mm. Seek God and His kingdom first. Yeah. And everything else will come. Yeah. By inheritance. I think that's where you you ingrain that into your into your into your family tree. Hmm. Won't we'll mess it up. You know? Like we're gonna pass something on, right? Hopefully it's you know, the wealth that we're able to accumulate on this world and give it give it to our generation. But the real wealth is going to come from that wisdom that we pass on. What took us 30, 40 years to build could take them 10, 12, if not sooner. Hmm. Instruct your child while he's young and yeah. he'll never stray from the path. Hmm. That's, a, that's a Bible verse right there for you. Yeah, that's man. It. So it's 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 a great reminder for us right now. I mean, we're we're in the we're on the ground floor of this thing, you know. Like it's we're getting a lot of traction, a lot of good things, but it's also got to get be reminded of, you know, keep us grounded. You know, that's why every morning I try to spend some time with God and ask Him to to help us be better stewards. Help me be a better steward of whatever You called me to. Help me be a better steward to. My wife, my you know that first kingdom of my family. Mm. How am I being a, a father? Like, can I be better? How can I be better at that? It's not even can I be better, but how can I be better? Yeah, you know, can I is still kind of leaving in your mind like I'm good, but is there a way? Yeah. Versus how can I is like, I know I could be better. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot more open. You're more open to receiving it. Yeah, man. Um, is how I is how I is how I see it. Going mm -hmm. back to King Solomon. Uh, I actually I like his his prayer to God um, because God goes to you know comes he enters God's presence and God says and I think it was in a dream uh, God says ask anything of me and I will it will be given to you right and as a king I mean you could ask for so many things like yes. I want to be king of not only Israel but I want to mm. be king of the world or I want to be the richest man or I want to I want everyone to know me and whatever, right? You can ask for so many vain things as king. Um, but he asked for wisdom. 
Mm. He said, God, give me wisdom so that I can rule your people well, right? And that's that's a prayer that I'm. It's often in my in my mind and in my heart, because, mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can also take a lot of wisdom and and still make bad actions or bad. You know, you can lose sight of what's important. But mm-hmm. if you have more wisdom to make correct decisions, I think that, and you you always bring them back to the standard of what does God want for me, and in my life. Then I think that you're you'd be on the right track, you know. Yeah. Mm. Just like you're saying, you know, how can I be better? How can I do this more effectively? Yeah, how can right. I be a better X Y Z? Use wisdom, wisdom. Yeah, yeah, man. God's wisdom. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I just want to say thank you for checking out today's episode. I know a lot of you have been asking how you can support us, and thank God uh, we have the website uh, updated, and we have ways for you to donate, whether that's a one-time giving or a monthly giving, whatever's in your heart. We obviously appreciate everything because this is definitely um, a ministry that's, that's fueled by people who are loyal supporters so um, if you go ahead and visit operationredwood.org you can click on the tab that says donate and then you can choose how much or how often you'd like to donate again we appreciate you guys thank you um, for your support and and help with growing this movement just so you're up we're up front and you guys know exactly where this money is going to uh, we support and we're partnered up with organizations like sentinel foundation and operation Lightshine, who are who are nonprofit organizations who um, are boots on the ground fighting and combating human traffickers um uh, we have a heart for children. I have I have a heart for children. And it breaks my heart every time I hear about children who are abused, who are um, neglected. And I mean, I hate to say it, but traffic, you know, and, and even saying it out loud is, is uncomfortable. But it's a reality that we the reality that we face, um, uh, not just as a country, but it, it, it's a worldwide epidemic. Um, and we are proud to support these organizations who are there fighting and combating these um, this evil, this darkness. So a portion of our subscriptions from the podcast go directly to those organiza- organizations out there doing God's work as well. So thank you guys for your support. I appreciate you guys for continuing to share and help us grow the Operation Redwood movement. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks.